Hey YouTube, it's me Spotty. Welcome to another week of Human Topicals. So today, I don't really have a topic for you guys, but instead I'm going to be answering a couple of you guys' questions. So the first question comes from Arjun or Arjun, and he just asked for me to talk about sponsorships and partnerships with cube stores. The reason I brought this question up is because I've got some pretty exciting news for you guys, and that is that I'm now part of the speedcube.com.au team. If you don't know, basically all that means is that I'm kind of in partnership with speedcube.com.au, which is a cube store in Australia, and it also means that I should be able to get my hands on a couple more puzzles than what I normally would be able to. So more reviews, more unboxings, and of course I'll still be giving my honest opinion, so you don't need to be worried about me changing too much around here. So if there is anything that you'd like to see, maybe there's a puzzle that you're especially excited about, then let me know in the comment section below, and that way I'll be able to see easily what you guys would like to see. Moving on though, the second question comes from Sack Witter. And he asks, is there anything that you wish you would have done differently when you first started cubing? So I can't really think of anything that I wish I would have done in terms of improvement, but there is one thing that I kind of regret doing, and that is selling my first speed cubes. So my first speed cube was the YJ Sulong, and then I moved on to a Guanlong and a Yulong, and I've gotten rid of all those puzzles since I started cubing. And it's not a huge deal, but Looking back, I really wish that I'd kept those because I guess those have some sentimental value in terms of like getting me into the hobby and stuff like that. So yeah, not a huge deal, just a small regret. The next question comes from Thought Cube Cubing and he asks, would you ever plan to travel to a different country to compete in a competition? And if so, where would you like to travel? If I had the opportunity to travel anywhere in the world for any competition, I would probably want to go to Worlds this year in France. I've never been to anywhere in Europe, so that in itself would be really, really awesome. And if I could compete in Worlds, a really huge competition like that, then again, that'd just be really, really awesome. Um, realistically though, I don't think that I would even travel outside of Australia to go to a competition, because it's just too far and the competitions in Australia are pretty good. Dabcuba asks, do you think magnetic cubes improve your times? So I've said this before, I don't really think getting a new cube, whether it's magnetized or not, will really improve your times by much at all, unless you're jumping from a really, really terrible cube. Um, your times might vary by a second or two, depending on what you average right now, but yeah, I don't think your times should vary that much because of the cube you're using, and your times have much more to do with what you're doing than what cube you're using. The next question comes from Cubing Kev, and he asks, do you think you'll ever be sub 10? At the rate I'm improving now, I think it'd be a very, very long time, if ever, that I reach the milestone sub 10. I mean, it is a very cool milestone, and it would be nice to reach it someday, but it's just not something that I'm really pushing towards or a priority right now. And that might change over time, but yeah, just right now, it's not something that's super important to me. Ryan X Tofar asks, which is better, the Volk 3 or GTS V2? Um, this question is kind of like, I don't really have a straight answer for you. I can't just say the Volk 3 is better or the GTS V2 is better. But I got this question a lot on my unboxing of the GTS V2. And both cubes are really, really excellent. Both have their pros and cons and I'm still, I still haven't broken in the GTS V2 so much. But yeah, they're different. The Volk 3 is more stable if that's something that's really important to you. But they've also got different feelings. So depending on what you like, one could suit you better than the other. And I think this is going to be the last question. It comes from Universal Force 1 and it's why do you keep changing your logo? So in the past month or so, I think I've changed my logo maybe twice as well as my channel art to go along with that. But they weren't drastic changes, like the shape and colors were still very, very similar. And I think it's still pretty identifiable as the logo for this channel. So yeah, they weren't terribly different. But the reason that I changed it was just because I got bored of the old ones, if you were wondering. But this one should be staying for a while as well, so you don't need to worry about that if you were worried, which you might have been. I'm not sure. But that's the last question for today. Thank you for all your questions on Instagram and on YouTube. If you do have any more questions, then feel free to leave them down in the comment section below or follow me on Instagram and I will update you when I'm doing the next Q&A. But other than that, thank you guys for watching and I will catch you all very soon. <laughs>